the prophetic oil on a, a virtuous woman, the virtue is really mental. When the woman with the issue of blood, the Bible said that she touched the hem of Jesus' garment. The garment of Jesus really represent the anointed. Also in Isaiah, the garment represent power. Also in Isaiah, we look at Isaiah saying about the garment of salvation. The garment of salvation. They ain't talking about the garment of praise. So when she touched the hem of his garment, she's operating in praise. She's operating in celebration and worship. So she's connecting with true worship, that quality that she was made to walk in. So in the Bible, when you see that the woman with the issue of blood, she's touching the hem of his garment. She's coming in contact with the true worship anointing to truly worship King Jesus. So a lot of women don't truly worship King Jesus. They go to church, they join seminars, they, they join different prayer groups and stuff like that, groups, you know, all that stuff. They don't truly worship because the word of the Lord on their life is not being done. They're just going here and there and doing this and this. And it's just like Martha. Martha had the favor of Jesus, but not the fruits of Jesus. So Jesus said, Martha, Martha, you do a lot of things. You're careful for many things. But Mary is sitting at my feet. Mary is truly worshiping me. And he even rebuked her and said, you lack this. So the prophetic oil of a virtuous woman is her mind is not in vanity doing things that's not going to be rewarded. Her mind is not drifting off of God's plan and will. She's staying connected to his plan and will. And she is staying connected because she's talking to him constantly about his plan and will. In Proverbs chapter 31, verse 17, Proverbs 31, 17 says that she girds up her loins with strength. She girds up her loins with strength. Now, in the book of Peter, Peter said, gird up the loins of your mind. So the mind is really representative of the loins. She girded up her loins with strength. So that means that she strengthens her mind. Now, what are the ways that a woman strengthens her mind? By what she has chosen to see in the plan of God concerning her eye schedule. So God doesn't want you to see everything. In Genesis, that woman is not supposed to be seeing that tree. She's not even supposed to be seeing the serpent. She's supposed to be seeing what is the next thing I could do to help Adam. Because that's what that's our assignment to help. So the vision is determining the thoughts. What you focus on, what you prioritize. That's why many times women have stress and worry and overthinking and anxiety. Because you're not girding up your loins with strength. So are you operating as a virtuous woman? No. <laughs> You, you don't want to deceive yourself and be like, you know, I'm virtuous. And no, you're not. You're anxious. That's not virtue. You overthinking. That's not virtue. You looking at your age, your time, your money, your health, your body. You, you're not in virtue. So you have to know these things so that when you're in the atmosphere of weakness and in the atmosphere of struggle, you know it's simply because I'm not in virtue. The prophetic oil of a virtuous woman makes her victorious in her thought selection. It makes her victorious in her decision making. It makes her victorious in what she has decided to glean from with her her free time. So saints, look what Proverbs 31, 17 says. She's girding up her loins with strength. And she's strengthening 
her arms. What does the arms represent? What you're carrying. Assignment. Task. Mission. And the mission is targeting her submission. Because is she willing to lay aside every other mission to attend to that mission? Come underneath that mission. So that is where she's strengthening her arms. She is exercising submission towards God. She's exercising submission towards where God has shown up and manifested himself on earth for her. So a woman strengthens her arms when she recognizes where Jesus is operating in human flesh for her sake. And she connects with that, that, that realm of, of presentation and she immerses herself in the mission of that person that is now depicting the straight and narrow path for her sake. Every woman has learning abilities, but the learning abilities, they have been so contaminated by the devil because the devil is deciding where you learn, what you learn, um, how you learn, and those things are not good. So when you look at the aspect of the virtuous woman, her prophetic awe actually makes her wise in detecting, I'm not supposed to be here listening to this. No, I'm not supposed to be watching this. No, I'm not supposed to be going there. No, I'm not supposed to answer my call here. No, I'm not supposed to be uh, pursuing this. No, I'm not supposed to be overanalyzing this. The virtuous woman does not assume. She gets clarity. The virtuous woman does not assume she gets clarity. So when the virtuous woman is operating in that prophetic awe, she is not assuming about things. She is a perfect communicator. She gets understanding. She gets understanding. She is not assuming. Assumption it provokes a woman into a conversation with a fallen angel. Intuition does too. Because intuition is really assumption in a deeper phase. Because in assumption, you still could be guessing. But in intuition, you have finalized that this is correct. That's why when you hear somebody say, my intuition is always on point. Nah, nigga, nah, nigga, nah, 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 nah. <laughs> it's not always on point. If, if, it, if it was always on point, you would be very rich. If it was always on point, you would never, ever have another day of sadness. If your intuition was always on point, you would never, ever, 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 ever get jealous of anybody. So a lot of times people... They have finalized their assumptions, and that's what intuition is. God is not an intuitive God. He is the God that imparts the discerning of spirits. He imparts accurate and truthful information. Now, information that you guess, you hope, and probably, maybe, no, is exact. Even when you are in the will of God, you will have to destroy the spirit of assumption. Don't assume. If you don't got actual information, shut the hell up. If you don't know a thing, shut the hell up. There's many things that God actually is holding from you because he know that you done operated in your intuition and you don't know it, but you believe you know it. So he let you think that you know it. Get clarity in all things. Don't assume. Well, I thought, I thought that, uh, uh, I thought that I wasn't supposed to do my eyebrows today. I thought I was just supposed to be bald because we was talking about Elisha being bald. 
And, and if I wanted to be better in my servanthood to Elijah, I need to learn baldness. So I just thought that I wasn't supposed to put my eyebrows on today. No, 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 no. Don't operate in assumption. There's people, do you know that there's people that hear my teaching and they don't even interpret my teaching correctly? Why you don't do this? Well, I heard you say on the teaching, You assume I'm talking to millions of people times. I'm talking to thousands of people times. I'm talking to hundreds of people times. Every message that I say ain't for you, Miss Orthopedic. Huh? It's not for you all the time. You got to learn to filter out certain stuff, baby milk. You can't be taking everything I say and say, Prophet said this on the broadcast, so I'm going to do it. No, I'm talking to some people prophetically. They need to hear the word and I can't reach them on no phone. I can't sit in therapy. I can't be in no therapy, no counseling session with people. I can't do that because I give too much wisdom for me to sit down and baby you and try to get to the bottom of things. Now you got to hear what I'm saying by the spirit as I disperse diversity of wisdom. Everything is not for you. Tell some people some stuff, then they up there take it for themselves. Okay. okay. Nah, I ain't talking to you. I'm talking to somebody's soul. Somebody needs to hear it. Learn to filter out what's not for you. I tell somebody, you need to get more sleep. You take the word. Oh, I'm going to take that word. I'm going to get sleep. Baby, you sleep more than a baby cub. You sleep more than a lioness and a lion in the, in the Congo. You sleep 24 hours a day. I ain't talking to you. You need to stop sleeping. Wake your behind up. You hear me talking about somebody. I tell somebody a word. You know, you, God said you need to get more sleep. Oh, I'm going to take that word for myself. No, nah, don't take it for yourself. You've been sleeping too long. That's why your health going, your mind going, your peace going, your joy going, your inspiration going. That's not for you. I, I give uh, somebody the word. Yeah, God says stop overworking. You talking about, oh, yeah, I'm going to stop overworking. Baby, now nah, you working part time. You only work three hours a week. That ain't for you. You don't cut your uh, boss. I only can come in for one and a half hours now. Why you can't come in? It's for religious purposes. What you mean religious persons as well? My pastor told me that I need to stop overworking. I heard him say that and I, I got to obey God and not man. No, I ain't talking to you. The person that's overworking could be working 50 hours a week, 60 hours a week. And God saying, stop overworking. You only working about 17 hours a week. The word, come on, man. You see, oftentimes, when you are a woman, you can snatch information that you need to throw back. Don't snatch it, throw it back. Because it's not for you. It's for somebody in your vicinity, it's not for you. If you are going to operate in prophetic oil, prophetic oil will let you know what's for you and what's not for you. And you take it for yourself. You take it and you recognize I am receiving this. No, I'm not receiving that for my sake. You see what I'm saying? As a woman, you're going to encounter God prophesying to others situation. And you got to recognize this is not for me. I can hear, but I don't wear I'm not pitting on this clothing. I have a specific clothing. And saints, always remember this. If the Lord is talking to another woman about something and you already heard the Lord tell you, don't go in the same way you came out. Don't eat or drink here. And you hear God telling the other woman what to eat and drink. And you switch your word of the Lord to adapt to that woman's word of the Lord, now you in sorcery. Now you in witchcraft. 
Now you in sin. Because that word was for that woman. You had the same encounter like that woman with a word. She is learning her word. You're unlearning your word to learn her word. My goodness. We're not glitching. Don't worry. I just said that several times. Don't go in and go out. By the way, every time you go on Wi-Fi, the Wi-Fi don't be working. Ain't that something? These Ninja Turtles be having us get Wi-Fi saying that they got fast signal and all this this bull jive and 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 and, and be squatticisms. And then when we get the Wi-Fi, the Wi-Fi be cutting us off. Saints, do you know that if I go on Wi-Fi while I'm doing a broadcast, it cuts me off while I'm on live. I have to use my phone service. Saints, we surrounded by scammers. Last phase of this broadcast, don't be a scamming woman. Until God does a work in your life, you as a woman is a scammer. You present yourself the best way possible, but that's not who you are. You act like you don't have no emotional problems, no mental problems, like you don't get sad, like you're always happy. You, you first talk to a woman. That's how she talk. Ah, soft voice. And then you get to know. Hey, dear man. Over a hundred percent of women, before you are trained, before you adapt to the training, you are a scammer. You scam. You act like you a certain way and you not like that. Oh, I stay to myself. Find out you uh, you the type of woman that if you feel offended about somebody else, you talking to somebody else about your offense. Yeah, it's not supposed to be done like that. And you know, I was going to say something, but then God told me not to say it. But you know, I, he telling me to tell you, He at least he told me to share this with you. If I was extremely big, my chair would have just broke. I just want you to know. <laughs> Thank God for exercises and exorcisms because if I was extremely big, my chair would have just broke just now. Just, I just want you to know that. Just That's just a sidebar. I just want you to know that. That's all. You be scamming. Let me tell you something about Moses, the dog that I had. I had a dog named Moses. Before I got the dog Moses, I sent someone to go and look at Moses and look at the dogs. There was another dog. Moses had a sister. His sister was extremely cute. I mean, cutest little dog you, you almost see. Just cute as could be. And the person was in love with that little, little, little dog. It was so cute and cuddly and loving. Listen. So I... The Holy Ghost told me to go to the dog place. And I got to the dog place. And Moses' sister, that little cute little girl dog, started barking. <laughs> turned, into, <laughs> turned into a Jamaican festival. Under the sea. Under the sea, under the sea, under the sea, under the, <laughs> under the, under the, under the, under the sea, under the sea, two sea, two sea, three to three sea, 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 whinings, everybody see, everybody see, the two sea, us, the two us see, a four in the sea, a five in the sea, A, B, C, D, E, F, A, the, the little dog, the little dog was so nice. Now here come God on the scene. The dog start manifesting. 
What was that girl dog all about? She was a scammer. And female dogs, even female dogs, have you ever encountered a female dog? They are sweet and loving because they want to advertise themselves to you. And even if they're with another owner, when they get around you, they're going to be real nice just in case the other owner forsake them. They'll have a place to go. You're not hearing me. No, 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 no. Even in the dog world. The female dogs are intentional about presenting themselves in a way that you would be admirable of them. You would be in awe of them. You would be awestruck by them and you would desire them. Women are perfect presentators uh, or presentational uh, geniuses. You go inside of a woman's house. You tell her that you go into a house. You see how she fix up the house. But you you pop up at a woman's house without her knowing. Sometimes drawers could be over there. Sometimes uh, uh, old wigs could be over there. Sometimes laundry clothes over there. Sometimes microwave messed up. Sometimes stove messed up. Sometimes <laughs> I, I, I'm just showing you if you don't know. If the woman don't know nobody coming, but if she hear that somebody coming for the first time, you see how she change up. A woman will go inside of the bank with some pajamas and onion eyes. But if you get invited to go to the awards, the BET awards, the, you see how you fix up yourself. So you scamming. Why? If I see you at the BET awards, I'm going to think that's you. That's not you. You wear pajamas when you go to the store. <laughs> you, you go inside of your vehicle without taking a shower. Your seat got yesterday's activities on it. <laughs> and you ain't fix it. And you at peace with it. Onion eyes and shades. <laughs> <laughs> bounce, bounce, bounce. <laughs> I kept my key in here, miss. You, you, you up there driving and you want to turn on gospel music. No, 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 no. Now, Saints, I want you to hear this. I want you to hear this. Now, you understand the prophetic all. It delivers you from scamming. Because it makes you into the woman that God wanted you to be. And you actually know that God wants you to be that way. That's why you presented yourself that way to, to others. Women are not stupid. You know how God wants you to be. So that's why you'll present yourself as that to others before you're actually like that. You're not like that in your function, but you will present that to others because even your spirit is convicting your soul that you should be like this. And so you'll, you'll start telling people, I, you know, I'm not this type of person. I don't do that. Da, 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 da. I'm not like that. You know, I don't deal with my pain like that. No, because that show that you have knowledge how you're supposed to deal with your pain. You have knowledge of how you're supposed to deal with trouble, drama, disaster, famines, issues, sickness. You have wisdom on how to deal with it, but you don't actually deal like that. Until you operate in the prophetic awe of virtue. 